Crafty Gemini. In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to measure your mini quilt so you can make and attach your quilt binding and my favorite way to hang my mini quilts on the walls. Okay, once you have your mini quilt quilted any way that you want, we're going to go ahead and trim this down to size. In this case, we have a block that should measure about nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches. And I just happen to have a ruler to that exact measurement, as you can see. So I can use this right here to trim around all four sides. And I know that I'll end up with a perfect square for my mini quilt. However, if you don't have one the exact size of the block that you're making, go ahead and use any other big ruler. If it's bigger than the block, that's even better because you can line it up where you need it. But you definitely want to have some type of a long strip or square ruler, all right? So the key is to take one of the 90 degree angles, the corners here of your ruler, and line it up so that you can follow at least cutting across one and the second edge here, one and two. And that's basically to ensure that the corners are perfectly square, they're 90 degree angle. So I'm actually, because this measures nine and a half inches, I think I'm just gonna line it up exactly where I want it and I'm just gonna carefully cut around it. Now, another quick tip actually, and I think I have mine right on hand, here we go, is, to use a rotating cutting mat. And you can see, because we're working with a small mini quilt, this little 12 inch by 12 inch rotating cutting mat can come in handy because the whole project fits on it. So let's put this right here. And I can see that that 45 degree angle going across my uh, ruler lines up with that diagonal seam. So I know that that is lined up nicely there. Okay, and now I'm just going to cut around all four sides, ensuring those crisp 90 degree corners. I'll carefully hold it here, leave it, let it go so it can turn. Yep, that's good. Without moving it, I'll go ahead and cut the other two. So you can see that my mini quilt now measures a perfect nine and a half by nine and a half inches. So there it is. The backing is in place and everything is fine. Now if you did uh, a little bit of quilting like I did, which just goes around these little kind of pinwheel triangles here, the rest of this is not quilted. So what I like to do if it's a project like this where a lot of it is not quilted, especially around the corners, you see how the quilt top fabric lifts up? I'm going to go on my sewing machine and with a really super scant like eighth or one sixteenth of an inch uh, longer straight stitch, I'm just going to stitch super close to the edge. That's just going to help the fabric, batting, and backing fabric hold all together around the corner so we don't run into any of this flipping up or separating anywhere of the corners of our little mini quilt. All right, and now that all the four sides of our three layers of our quilt sandwich are basted, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to measure the mini quilt that we're working on so that we can get the proper measurements we need to make our quilt binding. Now we know that this measures nine and a half inches across, okay, by nine and a half inches tall. So that tells me that every single one of the sides of the square, and because it's a square, the four sides are equal. That's nine and a half plus nine and a half plus nine and a half plus another nine and a half. And if you multiply nine and a half times four, you're gonna get 38 inches, okay? So that is basically the perimeter of the square here. To that 38 inches, go ahead and add 10. And that's just a safe number that I tend to do. You can add more. Typically, if you add a little bit less, you can get away with it, but you don't wanna to add too little and not have enough to finish off the ends of your binding, okay? So for me, 38 inches is the perimeter plus 10 inches gives me 48. That means I need at least 48 inches of binding made so it can work its way all the way around here and I can close off the two ends. Now we choose our binding fabric and I'm gonna choose another red print from my Dominicana fabric collection, which is the same fabric collection we've used for all of these prints. Remember, if you're ever interested in getting any of the supplies and materials that I mentioned in the video, just click open the description box that's below this YouTube video and I always include links right there for you. So from this, we know that the width of the fabric of these quilting cottons is about 42 to 44 inches and I need 48. So that tells me I need to cut out two strips and we're gonna have to piece them together. So on one end here, I'm gonna trim it up so I start off with a nice clean edge 
And a uh, personal preference here, the width that you choose to cut your strips for your binding. On a mini quilt like that, I tend to go two and a quarter, even two inches wide sometimes. So I think for this little guy, we're going to just cut two inches. But if you prefer to cut them at two and a half, that's fine too. Now these two strips will have to be pieced together, but the first step is to get rid of these selvages because we do not want them to show up in our finished binding. Now to piece these strips together, this is going to be the same technique you would use if you had, say, 12 strips to piece together. No matter how long you need to make your binding, it's going to be the same way. So we put one strip in front of us, vertically like this, with the pretty side of the fabric facing up. And then the next strip we're going to attach, we lay it perpendicular to the first one, and it's going to be with the pretty side of the fabric facing down, okay? So I'm going to just match up raw edges here and here and place a pin. And before you sew, and if you're kind of confused sometimes with the orientation, it really helps to put a pin because now you're going to sew from the top right corner to the bottom left. And if you put a pin kind of roughly where the seam line would be if I sewed from here to right where it exits off and meets the bottom little chunk there, then you can see that once you flip it back on itself, you're going to get one nice continuous strip of binding, and that's exactly what you want. So if you want to put a pin there, double check it, pull it back and make sure that it's right, then you can head over to the sewing machine and sew it. That will avoid you having to rip out any stitches in case you sew, say, from the opposite angle. And I'll show you. If you sew from the other way, look what happens. You'll have to, like, there's no way that you're going to get a continuous strip. It would be, like, the seam that way, okay? So that's not going to work. So remember, vertical strip in front of you, pretty side face up. The next strip, pretty side face down, perpendicular to that one. You're creating a backwards L with your binding strips. And then you're sewing from top right to bottom left. And you can draw this line if you're not that good at eyeballing it. I've been doing this so long that I just eyeball it. And I like to kind of look under here so I can see where exactly I need to come off because I want it to be right where the top fabric meets that bottom one. So let's head over to the sewing machine. I'll give you a close-up shot of exactly how I do that. And now that we've sewn the two strips together, we can just go ahead and you can measure or eyeball it. I'm just cutting about a quarter of an inch away from that seam line to get rid of uh, to get rid of any excess and then when we open this up we end up with a nice strip i'm gonna get my pressing mat and go ahead and press this if you use a small enough stitch length you can also press the seam open and sometimes that's helpful to reduce the bulk because we still are going to go back and fold this binding so it's going to be doubled up so you can do it like that and now we have one continuous binding strip made up of both of the strips that we cut earlier now two full strips at the width of the fabric is a lot more fabric than I need. So I'm going to go ahead and roughly measure. Remember we said we needed about 48 inches. You can always use more, but 80 some inches is a little more than I really need. Okay, so I have about 48 inches. The next step is to, again, iron. And now we're going to iron this in half lengthwise with the pretty side facing out. So we're going to flip it so it's like this. We're looking at the ugly side of the fabric and then you're just going to fold it in half lengthwise matching the two raw edges and press the entire length of the of the finished binding strip. So now we have our mini quilt and we have our binding. So to get started with attaching the binding here, you can choose to use uh, pins some uh, clips, like the clips that clip through all here, but I tend to just take the two individual parts to my sewing machine and just kind of sew it on as I go because it's such a small piece. But I want to show you here at the table how exactly I orient the binding to make sure that I have both a tail left and a nice wide and big open space so that I can have space to maneuver and attach those two binding ends when we work our way around and come to the end. If that makes no sense to you, you probably haven't attached the binding. If you've added binding to quilts, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start off by measuring from one end here to the other. That's going to give me about, what, nine and a half inches tail on here. So I'm just going to measure here, like just lay it on this measurement. And then I'm going to start sewing here. 
The reason for that is I want to leave. If I start sewing here, I'm going to have this flapping in the wind and that's going to be my tail. I definitely want that to work with at the end. I'm going to put a clip here and this is only about an inch and a half in from the corner. So if I start sewing there, all that is going to be attached and this is going to be loose. So say we work our way this way, this way, this way you'll see that when we work our way back to the end, we're gonna stop sewing about the same distance away from this bottom corner here. So let's pretend somewhere here. So I can show you the importance of having those tails. So that means the stitching line is gonna go all the way around, but on this fourth side, it's only gonna have a little bit sewn on each, and then you're gonna have this big open space, both a space in the actual quilt itself and two long tails that are more than what you need to attach your binding ends. And that's what you wanna have. The wider space you leave in your actual quilt, the easier it will be in the end to attach those two ends. All right, so let me get rid of this clip and I'm gonna leave this one here so I know where I wanna start. And I'm gonna head over to the sewing machine so you can get a close-up shot of exactly how I stitch this down and how we miter the corners here. Okay, so we're starting off this is where I'm starting, and I'm going to sew in this direction because remember, I want this loose. So when I'm coming up on a corner, if you notice, here's the corner. I'm going to stitch and stop about a quarter of an inch up from where this bottom edge of the quilt is here. Okay, you can't see it, but you can see where it extends past here, and you can see it right there as well. All right, so I'm going to just stitch about, about a quarter of an inch up, whatever your seam allowance is, and I'm going to sew there. And when I get to that point with the needle down, that is about a quarter of an inch up from this bottom quilt edge, I'm going to lift my presser foot up, and I'm just going to pivot my quilt so that the two edges are coming in at a 45 degree angle. All right, put my presser foot back down and I'm just gonna stitch off the edge. So do you see how that went? I came down, stopped about a quarter of an inch up, pivoted and just sewed off the edge at that, uh, that 45 degree angle. All right, now we turn it. So that, because we need to come this way and start sewing down this way. So we grab the strip, we flip it up away from your body so that now this fold is in line. In this case, if you're doing the same mini quilt that I did, you can see the seam right there because it's running 45 degree angle to the project. So we're gonna fold this up so that this fold is at a 45 degree angle, which is basically just in half of this 90 degree right angle corner. Once you have it folded up and it's folded right there, then you're gonna hold it and bring the strip straight down. But you wanna have that little fabric folded there. You're bringing it down towards you until the fold is flush with this top edge. And now you can see that the strip is going nice and straight down. You can put some clips or pins or anything you want. Now we're gonna start sewing. I just hold it because this is so small. I'm gonna start sewing here, quarter of an inch in, and I'm gonna back stitch a couple stitches to secure that corner. And then you just sew the whole way down until you get to the next corner. And again, when I get to this corner, I'm gonna stop a quarter of an inch up from the edge. And that looks good there. Stop with the needle down, lift the presser foot, pivot my project, and stitch off that corner. Turn it, flip my strip up at a 45 degree angle. Bring it down so the fold is flush with the top edge of your quilt match up the raw edges here, and stitch down again. And now I'm coming up on the last corner, so I'm gonna miter it just like I did the others. And now when I start to sew here, don't go all the way. You just want to sew a little bit. Remember, we need a gap here so that we can combine the two ends and sew them up. 
and that's plenty, okay? So this is what you should have at the end. Two long tails and a nice big open space on one side of your mini quilt. Now we get to the point where so many beginning quilters or quilters in general tend to struggle with how to put these two ends together. Some people will just cut them, bump them up, and then you get this really straight seam right there and you can tell where the join is, it's quite bulky. But I'm gonna show you how you, can mi or how you can attach the two ends so that they come together on a mitered edge, just the same way that you attach those strips to make one continuous longer piece. We're gonna do the same thing for this join here and it is so easy, okay? So here's how it goes. You basically want these two leftover tails to overlap one another, okay? by the same width that you cut your strips. So if you recall, I went narrow on mine and I cut them only at two inches. So that means I need these two strips to overlap by only two inches. Now to do that, obviously I have more on this bottom one than I need, so you can chop some off of one. And now we have clear open space to kind of drape this one over. So from where this bottom one ends, right there, to where I'm about to cut this top one, it needs to measure two inches. So for that, we'll just take any ruler, put it right there, and here's the zero point right where that edge is, okay? One inch, two inch, and right where that two inch mark is, I'm going to cut that top fabric. Super easy. You got rid of your tails, but you needed them there so that you could cut them down to size. Now, all we do is Pretend there's nothing else on here and you're going to combine these the same way that you did your fabric strips when you were making the longer strip for your binding. So let me show you. You're going to open one up pretty side face up and I'm putting it uh, or laying it vertically in front of me. And then the other one is going to come perpendicular to this one with the pretty side face down. And in this case, I did a, a I it's really a bad choice to show you this because where we joined our seams just happened to end up right in the same spot where I'm going to do this, but it's not a big deal. This is just one solid strip. Pretend there's no seam there. And then we'll add this one right there. Okay. I'm going to grab some pins just so I can hold these uh, layers a little bit more together. And then the same thing. So do you see how this is like a mini version of the strips? This one is vertically in front of me straight with the pretty side facing up. And this one is perpendicular on top of it, matching raw edges and pretty sides face down. So I am just going to put a pin right there. And then you need to do the same thing. Make sure, you know, sometimes it really helps to fold the quilt up so that you can get access to both of these strips. And so then we're going to sew from the top right corner to the bottom left just to hold them nice and flush so I don't end up with any crooked things. So at this point, it might be helpful to draw the line that we're going to sew on so we don't have to fuss too much with the rest of the strips here. Let me grab my pen and a little ruler. And I'm just going to mark. Right there. So we're going to sew from here to here. We'll trim away this excess. And you'll see that when we open the quilt, it's going to lay super flat and it's going to be perfect. All right, so here's where we sewed from there to there. We're gonna trim away about a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line, get rid of that excess. And now let me grab my iron so you all can see the big reveal. When you open this up, you'll see what happens. It just fits itself right into place, okay? And remember, we had another seam right there, so really it ended up being like right on top of the other one. So it kind of worked out in this case. So we'll press it flat and it does help especially in my case to press that seam open to kind of help reduce the bulk I guess it doesn't really matter for me because I ended up with one seam on top of the other but it won't be too much more bulk there that's all right so then once it's there just kind of tug on it a little bit I press it into place so it lays flat and I can again match up the raw edges of the binding and the quilt and I'll go back and I'll just start stitching where I ended here and stitch all the way down and finish off where I started initially right here.
All right, we stitched up that last edge. I'll just give it a good press. And then I like to go back with my iron and press it away because it's gonna be flipped towards the back. And then I like to hand stitch my bindings down most of the time. And that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Then I'll meet you back here to show you my technique on how to hang your mini quilts on a wall with no damage to the quilt or the wall. If you need a tutorial on the hand stitching part of this, go ahead and use the link I've included for you in the description box below, or right here on the screen, I've included a card that will take you over to the video tutorial where I have step-by-step -step instructions on how to hand stitch the quilt binding to the back of your quilt. All right, so here is my finished turnstile mini quilt. You can see I hand stitched the binding onto the back side of it, and now it's ready to be set up so that I can hang it on my studio wall. Now the technique I'm gonna show you here I've been using for years, and it works great for mini quilts, but also you can do it uh, to larger quilts and hang them on the wall inside your home or in a bedroom anywhere, and it works fine. I've had a quilt hanging up on a wall now for several months, and it hasn't come off. So I'm gonna teach you how to do this, super inexpensive and easy. You have your mini quilt let's set that aside and go over the other supplies here I have a tag board or cardboard you just need something that is paper but that has some stiffness to it okay so a little tag board something like this it's thin and this is just cardboard you can use the cardboard that comes in your pre-cut packs uh, in the back that helps keep everything kind of a little bit sturdier so just save whatever little cardboard you have all you're gonna need are like two really tiny little pieces anyways so some type of paper kind of stiff paper then you're gonna need some regular old Elmer's glue an iron and an ironing board and then the magic here are these command strips and they come in all different sizes and they'll even tell you how much they hold I've taught I've uh, just put in a bunch of leftover ones from other packs in here, but you can see that this one says it holds half of a pound. These ones here, they call them poster strips, and they say they're for picture hanging, so it doesn't have a set weight, but I find that these are some of the most affordable ones. I can, you can even get these at the dollar store, and they hold up perfect for mini quilts. You can even use them on a bigger mini quilt than this. You just don't wanna to put too much weight on it because obviously they're made to hold posters. But we'll start off with these guys. There's also ones that have like this Velcro clip and these are the ones that I use when I'm hanging larger quilts in my house. So the idea is that one side goes stuck on the wall and the other one goes stuck on the back of the quilt so that these two, it's like hook and loop kind of, and when you crunch them together, they hold. So this would be the quilt, and this would be the wall, and it would hold it up there. And then, if you're familiar with these command strips, you just pull on here, and it will peel it off of the wall, and there's no damage uh, to your wall. So this is one of my favorite, favorite ways to hang quilts. It's quick, easy, inexpensive, and I frankly don't have time to be sewing sleeves to the back of my quilts, especially not to something this small. I just want to put it up there and have it lay nice and flat on the wall. So let me show you how it works. The first thing you're going to do is flip this over, decide how you want to orient this, and I think I'm going to hang it like this. So I'll turn it here. So I'm just going to put, you can even just do one, uh, but if you want to put one on each corner for your mini quilt, that helps the corners lie nice and flat against the wall. So it'll, it'll be really flat against it. So I'm going to do one and two. I'm going to get my cardstock or I mean um, tag board or cardboard or whatever here. And I'm just going to cut out two little pieces. You don't even have to measure. I mean, this is just a foundation for the back of the quilt. So here are my two little pieces. And let me see if I move this. I think I wanted it like that. So the idea is that I'm going to put these two here. Okay? Um, now you take your glue and you glue these guys down. Some of you who are not familiar with glue basting might be thinking, there is no way I'm going to put glue on my quilt. Trust me, this glue, if you're using the same as I am, the Elmer's white glue here, it's washable. So if you ever decide to take it down from your wall, just peel this paper off and just give the quilt a little wash but it's on the back side, so you're not really gonna see it. All right, so I added glue there, I put that down, and now I'm gonna bring my iron and ironing board over, and we're gonna set it just like we would do with a glue basting technique. Obviously, you don't wanna hold it there too long because it is paper, but that is gonna set the glue on the back side of it so that this is not gonna come off. And I can see that my iron is a little dirty. No big deal for this project. All right, so the same idea for the second one. Put a little glue, doesn't need much. Set it in the other corner. 
and I'm just going to set it with a hot dry iron. You don't want to add steam here because if we're using a paper product, uh, the moisture is going to make it buckle and wrinkle and all kinds of stuff. Okay. So there we go. We have those two corners set. Nothing is falling off. Now we're ready to install these command strips on here. And these little packs that I have here come with eight. And if you're using these ones, not the hook and loop ones that I showed you earlier, if they're just the regular poster one, then you're only going to need two. One for each one. It has two little sticker, like paper ones that need to be peeled off. And you'll see that when you turn it over, it tells you the wall side. This one should go towards the wall. So if this is going to go towards the wall, I know that I'm going to peel off the red and white side and place it right there. So this is sticky here. And I'm just going to place it close to the edge because I want those corners to hold nice and flat. And I just put it there. I leave the sticker on this side until I head over to my wall to place it right where I want it. Same thing for the other side. I peel off one side, flip it, and here. And notice, I'm not measuring. These don't have to be perfect. When you stick it on the wall, then you want to make sure that it's somewhat in a, in a line. But for right here, it doesn't matter where it is. So just keep in mind that when you're cutting out either the cardboard or tag board piece, that's uh, the foundation for the little command strip. It just needs to be a little bigger than the actual strip that you're using. So if it's a longer one, make sure that you cut out pieces that are long enough to uh, cover the entire space where this is going to be stuck on. All right, so our little strips are in place. Now all we need to do is head over to the wall and place it exactly where we want it, making sure that we peel these two little paper things off before we stick it to the wall. And then after I stick it on, I'll show you how it holds and I'll also show you how to take it down and take this apart. So you can see that there will be no damage to the wall that I'm hanging it on or to the quilt. All right, so I have a spot right here on my wall with a couple of other minis that are around it and I think I'm going to put this one right here somewhere okay so you can draw lines and you can put the laser thing and make sure that they're straight but because I'm going to be kind of compiling a ton of minis on my studio wall here I don't think it really matters I'm just going to kind of eyeball the distance from the other one eyeball the distance from here and place it wherever I want to this is meant to be a super quick and easy way to just get something on the wall so again we're just going to peel the little paper off the back of both of these and now we're ready to stick it wherever we stick it that's exactly where it's going to fall so let me see and boom i just press right there and my mini quilt is nice and flat and on the wall is that easy or what all right, so there it is, and you can see that it's nice and secure. Even if I flap it like this, it's not going anywhere. So for a mini quilt, even a big one like this, I have this one on here using this, the exact same technique. And so are these, they're all stuck on there. You can see that for the little ones, I kind of just go ahead and put two, just like I did at the top. If it's a bigger quilt than something like this, then you may want to um, put some on the bottom corners as well. That might come in handy. But again, if you're just decorating a space, or doing something quick, another option would be to prep the back of a mini quilt like this. If you're doing a swap or giving one as a gift, you can prep it and remember, just leave the little back papers and that way the recipient will know, you know, obviously give them some instructions, but you can tell them, just peel a little paper backing and stick it wherever you want to. All right, so I think I've shown enough that that is stuck on there, it's not going anywhere. So now let me show you how to remove it. All right, so when you're ready to remove the quilt, from wherever you had it all you need to do is come under here and access where the little arrow of the, of the command strip is and I'm just gonna pull on it all the way all the way all the way and you see that it comes off the wall so there's no damage to the wall and the whole thing even came off of here so let me remove the other one I'm just peeling back that uh, the little tag board piece so I can access this kind of foamy handle and you just pull straight down it just comes off. So as you can see right there on the wall, there's no damage to the wall. There's no push pin holes, nothing. Okay, no hardware installed, nothing like that. So this now becomes garbage, but then I'll show you. All you need to do is peel this off. And if any of the paper comes off and on the quilt, remember that the glue is washable. And because it's paper, you just have to give this a quick wash and everything will come off. Now for me, because I just installed this one, I can see that the glue is still even a little bit wet. So that's kind of why it's kind of the paper's coming off of it. But again, the glue is washable. The paper or cardboard is going to be washable. So once you give this a good wash, you're not going to have any damage to the quilt because there's no holes. You didn't have to install any hardware. It's just some paper and some washable glue.
And now, because I wanted to show you the complete process from hanging it up, taking it down, and seeing that there's no damage to your quilt, I went inside my house and I just um, wet the corners here and rubbed off the remaining paper and glue and I just kind of squeezed out these two corners so you can see that this has shrunk a little bit uh, compared to the bottom corner because I didn't pre-wash my fabric. So I did want you to see that so you can see that I actually wet it. I rubbed off the remaining paper, rinsed off as best I could. I just kind of just ran it under the, the, the kitchen sink, just a little faucet right there. And then I just let it dry out a little bit. So I'm going to hit it with an iron to finish. Yeah, it's pretty dry. Just to get some of those wrinkles out from me wringing out the corners. But if this was a bigger quilt, you could just pop it in the wash and the dryer the entire thing. But I just wanted to show you that so you can see that there's no damage, there's no residue, there's no holes in the quilt or anything like that. And as you saw earlier, there was no damage to the wall either. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing again because I definitely want to hang this on my wall. So real quickly, I'm going to prep this. And if you feel unsafe maybe about hitting the iron right there on the paper, you can always add some fabric on top first. Some type of a pressing cloth, which is fine. And then set. And let's head back to the wall so I can stick it right where I want it. And there it is, my foolproof and inexpensive way to hang your mini quilts on the wall. And that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to measure your quilts so you can make and attach your quilt binding. And also that you'll give my little hanging technique a try the next time you have a mini quilt or a wall hanging that you want to put up on one of your walls. Now, if you enjoyed this video tutorial, make sure to hit it with that thumbs up below. Share it across the different social media sites and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. If you like the little turnstile quilt block and you want to make it from beginning to end, make sure that you click right here and I'll take you to the beginning of the video playlist where we learn how to make the quilt block and also how to hand quilt it. I'll also include links for that in the description box below this video and I thank you again for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!